Hi, uh, I'm Wayne Robinson. Um, I'd like you to come and join me at my clinic. Uh, I look forward to seeing you, you know, and I'll help you as much as I can. Every horse and every rider there is at a different place. So if you're open, open to learn, you can see a lot of different things, you know. You're going to see some good things, you're going to see some things that probably ain't so good. But that's why it's, it's, it's good to see that, you know, so you can, you can go home and think, man, you know, I'm on the wrong track, or man, that, yeah, I'm, I'm on the right track, you know. You know, you can experiment. You got to go home and work at it. A lot of people have been to clinics, and they've been going to clinics for 20 years, and they know better than when they started than when they are today, because they don't go home and practice. You don't need a lot of information. You just need a little bit of information, and you got to go home and practice it. Practice until you get it good. You got to practice it until you don't even have to think about it, and you just do it. Then you go away and get a bit more information, and you come back. Um, that's the way I've learned over the years, you know, since, you know, since I was a teenager. I wasn't that smart. I didn't need a lot of information. I just took little bits of information off um, people. And I go away and I practice it. You know, at clinics, I was, you're at, I'm at a clinic every day. I got horses, I cows. I was taught and told to observe, remember and compare. And I do that every day. Yesterday I was at a clinic. At Silverado with the pre-work. Man, I was there were some good hands there. And I'm watching little things. Little things that I can get better at. And that's it's part of learning. Like you gotta believe in your program from top to bottom. But that does not mean that you don't add to it. I'm adding to my program all the time. You gotta enjoy learning, you wanna get better. To me, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. So, you know, as far as people coming to clinics. It's good, it, it exposed you to, to some different things. You know, in this area, two-year-olds or whatever, a lot, of, a lot of these guys, they want to get these colts hot, tired and pissed off, and then they want to teach them something. I want to get a colt in a learning frame of mind. And to get him into that learning frame of mind, you can be teaching him some, teaching him some stuff. I'm not saying he's just loafing off and doing whatever he wants, but he wants to be with you. He's He's curious, he's interested, he's trying to help you. It's not, it's not a big intimidating deal. Where, where that horse comes from his side and tries to help you. Where it's his idea to get it done. Um, and that's important to me. It's a different feel. The intimidate deal, it only lasts for so long. But when you get that colt where it's his idea and he's given you everything he's got to try to figure it out and help you, man, it's a different feel to me and them horses will go on. The issues I see a lot of kids or a lot of people having with their horses, and it's real simple. They're trying, they, they don't, this is just one of them, but this is pretty simple and it's pretty basic. My deal, I believe anyone can do what I do on a colt, anyone can do it. But you gotta understand a few little simple things. And a lot of people are trying to move the front end and all the weights on it. Some people are trying to move the hind end and they got all their weight centered on it. If they just learnt where to shift that weight, like to move the front end, the weight needs to be back. To move the hind end, the weight needs to be forward. The first thing I do is shift his weight so he can move his front end, or shift his weight so he can move that hind end. Where is his mind? A lot of people are trying to turn him to the left and his mind's to the right. His mind stuck at the barn to the right. It ain't going to work. The first thing you got to do, you got to get his mind back. Hey, the, you got to get back over here, and then you then you rock him back, and then you go. But so it's understanding where he is at a, at that time, and it it changes all the way through, all, like from moment to moment, it changes. So keeping a track of that mind, you get it and let it go, get it and let it go, and you keep it longer. So just knowing where that horse is, horse is at, man, it, it, it's a big thing. And knowing 
what happened just before he did something good? What happened just before he did something bad? So when it's shaping up to be good, just let it happen. Don't get in his way. But see, that's a feel thing right there. But if it's shaping up to be something undesirable, just before get in his way. Just get it, just make that a little unhandy for him. But shape, but feeling where that colt's at. There's times like first time on a cow or, or or the first ride on him. He's going to do things the first ride that you're going to need when he's a five-year-old. If it's shaping up, just let it happen. But he doesn't understand why he did it. But he just did it. But just don't don't kill it. A lot of people, we kill a lot of stuff. We kill a lot of good things in our horses because they're shaping up to do it and we don't feel it. And man, it's it's gone, it's finished, it's history. And then, you know, and then getting it tied into a cow, getting it cow related. A lot of people can get a lot of stuff on a thing, but they don't even blink an ear or an eye at a cow. It's all mechanical. And then when they put their hand down, they don't even know there's a cow in the pen. Now, I don't want one taking over or running the show. I'm gonna run the show. But man, he comes back to me for support and guidance. I'm helping him through there. He's, I've got his back. He gets a little scared, a little, up, um, little unsure. He knows I've got his back. And man, he will get brave. He will get brave, you know. And you never ask him to do something, he can't. Now that's where your better judgment comes in. Like, some of my colts I've, you know, it's gone, I've won a little bit on. And there's better colts out there, but I've never told them they're not as good as some of them real good colts. Never. Never told them. You know, you never ask them to do something they can't. But, you know, I'm not saying I don't get one to try. I teach one to try. Oh yeah, teach, got to teach and try. But you build that in from the first day I lay my hands on him to when I go showing, I'm building try and trust. Very important, very important, especially for them horses to go on. I think I could help some people ride some colts and 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 get along with their colts a little better and don't go through some of the stuff that I went through. You know, I've been riding colts now since I was 13 and I'm uh, 31 years so, and, and riding colts and that's been my bread and butter for you know it, you know since for a long time for well long enough anyway and I, I think I can help some kids avoid some stuff that I went through you know with a colt I think you know a lot of times colts are doing things that we don't want them to do and it's because self-preservation is getting in the way or we, we don't, we taught them to do it. They, them undesirable things that they're doing, we taught them to do it and we didn't even know it. Or they're scared, you know, or self-preservation's getting in the way. So if we can eliminate a few of them things, you know them, like I kept saying, they want to get them hot, tied and pissed off and try to teach them something. And I, I you know, I, I think there's a better way.